Good morning, District Attorney Gascon. Thanks so much for being here. Good morning, Melissa. How are you? I'm good. Well, let's start with the subject of the day. Recently, your office sent letters to Lyft, Uber, and Sidecar uh, demanding that they make some changes to their business model or, or face prosecution. Tell us about that and why your office felt felt compelled to do that. Yeah, and first of all, I want to make it very clear that we support innovation and new business models. So this is really about trying to strike a balance between consumer protection and supporting new business models. But we have been investigating this for quite a while and we've gotten complaints and we started looking at this. And the more that we looked at it, we have some real concerns around claims of you know the, having the best backgrounds in the industry. Uh, we looked at a problem with the metering, metering uh, for a couple of the companies as to how they compute the fares. Uh, and we looked at several other things that really gave us a great deal of concern as to whether they're following the law and whether you know the consumers are being protected in the process. Mm -hmm. uh, but we want to take very thoughtful steps. So we send the letters. Uh, frankly, we're not planning to make this public. It was one of the companies that, that made the letter public. Uh, we want to have conversations and see if we can figure out a way to fix this problem. Now, have these companies responded to the letter? I understand today was the deadline for them to reach out to you guys to right. have a conversation. Uh, have they? Uh, I know for sure two have, and I believe the other one may have late Friday or perhaps early today. Oh, so are you confident that you can get this resolved? I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so because the, the things that we're asking for are very reasonable. Quite frankly, they could be implemented very, very quickly with minimal, if any, economic impact on their business model. Now, so one of the issues, of course, is background checks. Um, I was looking, at least Uber, for example, has its background check policy on its website. It says we do a criminal background check going back seven years. Is it your office's contention that they, they don't, in fact, do these background checks? Well, the, we have evidence to believe that certainly people that have significant problems in their you know, prior criminal history, you know, sex registrants and others are, are certainly being employed. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we believe that fingerprinting would be a much better way and uh, to, to conduct a more thorough background. And I know the industry has fought that. Actually, they created legislation around not doing, not having to do so. Um, what and was their reasoning for that? I don't know. I don't know, <laughs> okay. other than perhaps the cost. I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. But we want to make sure, you know, we're all businesses in California require, if you're advertising, you have to have truth in advertising. Mm -hmm. And if you're saying certain things that are, uh, that are not quite there, we want to make sure that, that that is removed. You know, the consumers rely on advertising, and we want to make sure that consumers are getting a true picture when they're looking at those businesses. Now, uh, in a response, we, we reached out to the three companies, and in a response, um, Uber in particular um, stated that, that you guys, that your office has made numerous inaccurate assertions that they plan to discuss with you. Are you did they, have they told you what any of those are, or are you aware? Um, of any of the factual right. sort of distinctions that, that each side is, is making here? Yeah, they have not. And certainly the, the reason for us to invite the companies to come in and have a conversation is because we want to make sure that we are all on the same page. And mm -hmm. if they have, uh, you know, if they have evidence to show that we're actually uh, somehow not looking at this correctly, we want to make sure that we also uh, listen to them. Excellent. Well, just shifting gears real fast, I know you had a great victory with the passage and the signing of the anti-theft um, cell phone bill recently that was signed by Governor Brown. Um, I know you, would, you worked very closely with Senator Mark Leno to make sure that that got passed. Um, I understand that the new Apple 6s have the, uh, the, the kill switch technology in them. Do you have one? Did they send you I, a free one? I, I don't have a free Apple phone. I do have an older one, and I do have the kill switch. I, I went through the old system where you have to go searching for it. But yeah, it's, it's really, and first it was a victory for the, you know, the consumer. It's not a personal victory for either Mark or I. Certainly we were a tool in the process, but I think the consumers are really the winners here. Uh, but it's really, really nice. I saw a new Apple phone the other day, and you know, as soon as you turn it on, it already has a pre-enable uh, kill switch, very simple, you know, really the consumer doesn't have to do anything, it's there, very simple. Um, it's great, and, and we're seeing the results, already we're seeing reductions in robberies of Apple phones, and we know that Samsung and the other manufacturers are also trying to follow uh, the spirit of the law, and certainly by July 15th of next year they will have to, uh, so it's exciting to see this.
Well, excellent. And before you go, I wanted to ask you about a recent study conducted by scholars at MIT and UCLA about the political attitudes of the electorate in certain cities. And what they found is that Mesa, Arizona is the farthest right, rightward city in America. And they found, mm. of course, that San Francisco is the farthest left in terms of major cities in America. Now, you have been the chief of police in both cities. Are you aware of anyone else who has sort of served in public office in both the rightmost and the leftmost uh, cities in America? You no, know, I, I don't think so. I think that I definitely, and it's funny because I have been saying for years that I've worked, uh, walked the entire political spectrum from the right to the left and LA being more moderate. <laughs> Uh, but now there's data that, that supports my assertions. <laughs> Is there a picture of you in, in City Hall in Mesa, Arizona? So, or maybe a target. Maybe a target. <laughs> the defector. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being with, here, being with me here on Bay Sunday. I really appreciate it. My pleasure, Melissa. Thank you. For Bay Sunday, I'm Melissa Griffin-Kane.